Hey everyone, Eugene here. Hope you're all well. I'm joined by my man here, Chris, and we have for you today from Guerlain. This is Songe d'un bois de tape from the Desserts de Orient collection. I'll start off quickly by showing you the packaging. Comes in this, I guess, like a jewelry box. Opens up a little bit different than the um, other exclusives. Doesn't come with a bulb atomizer like a lot of them from um, the Art and Materials line. Very similar bottle. It's a little bit smoky with a little bit of that gold powder raining down. There you have Songe d'un bois de thé. A little bit of Arabic script on the opposite side. Now, we had a chance to speak with Terry Wasser back a few months ago and we asked him what his inspiration was for this perfume. And he told us as he was traveling the Middle East sourcing um, materials, somebody had accused him of not being able to um, create quality fragrances. Basically told him he made crap fragrances. This really, what, what it did was light a fire under his ass. When he got back to France, he worked madly on this whole new line. Um, Guerlain gave him complete um, control over this, uh, this collection here. No marketing team, no focus groups, and this is what he presented to us. What do you get? Uh, for me, I, I have to say as well, you're much more familiar with this than I am. Um, I've worn it properly a few times. I've tested it a lot, both at the boutique and at home by myself. Um, for me, mostly I get really dry woods and I get really sweet resins. Yeah, um, to me, I get a lot of spices from here. Uh, spices listed, I think it's uh, bay leaf, cardamom, cumin, and saffron. Yeah. I get a, for me, the major note is cumin. Gives me a little bit of that B.O. skankiness, barnyard. Um, also a little bit of sexual innuendo I'm getting from this, like walking into a room that has been a little, little bit of um, gyrating going on. Um, I get a lot of dry woods, like dry cedar, very dry. I mean, this yeah, is, um, is marketed dry. towards the Middle East. Yeah. Um, a little bit of herbalness from that bay leaf. You get any herbalness? I can't, I can't say I do. Uh, to me, it's funny because I actually talked about this in a video of mine recently in one of my sample videos and I mentioned how it opened really sweet and then ended up getting kind of skanky, but testing it in the last couple days in anticipation for the video, I actually kind of found the reversed. I found that the opening was a lot skankier and then it dried down into something much more sweet resins. But that was kind of like just recently, so it kind of threw me because I totally wasn't expecting that. So what this is supposed to be is a dry, woody leather. Mm -hmm. Now the leather note in here it, to me, I'm getting a different kind of leather all the time. Sometimes I'm getting a lot more than others. And when I am picking up that leather, it's salty. Um, it's meaty, like cooked meat. Um, it's like the leather that you'd get off of, uh, let's say, your lover's skin. You know, sweaty, salty skin. Yeah, I believe I described to you as it smelling like burnt, salty uh, vanilla and you said you definitely got a saltiness yeah like you didn't get as much vanilla and I can't even say it's vanilla it was definitely I think more of a sweet resin looking at the notes uh, probably the myrrh uh, perhaps some like benzoin or something like that but I just I definitely need to get a really sweet feeling from it yeah sweet salty you, burnt you mentioned burnt I'm getting a lot of burnt wood from this smokiness almost like standing um above a campfire. And you know that smell if you've ever stood in front of a campfire? You got a little bit of sweat, you got that smoke in your hair, you, um, you know, your skin absorbs that smoke. That's what this reminds me of a lot. Um, kind of more like the day after smell or something? Yeah, or that, yeah. Or like you don't something shower like that, that night? That's yeah. right, that's right. Like you haven't showered and uh, very cuminy and spicy and... Yeah, I know. A little bit of skankiness. Not a little bit, a little bit more, actually. That's, that's I know human can there. have very uh, dirty, kind of animalic qualities. Um, so maybe just because I've not used it as much, I'm interpreting the cumin as more of like the oud or the leather in it or something, because I definitely yeah. do get animalic qualities, but not particularly 
herbal or spicy qualities. Yeah. Okay, you mentioned oud. There is an oud note listed in here. Um, to me, it's not a very strong note. No. It's not overpowering. If anything, it's very fine, well balanced, and uh, it just adds a, a very small dimension here. Yeah. Um, you mentioned sweetness. I actually jotted in my notes. I get no sweetness really? from this. I get none of that um, typical wow. Guerlainade, like um, Tonka, Vanilla, Iris, Rose. Ja Jasmine's a listed note, you know. Yeah, I, can't I can't say, say it makes a very strong presence, oh. but basically that's that's what I'm getting. Yeah, you know, I can't argue with you. You're definitely more seasoned. This is like one of your favorite Guerlains ever, probably one of your favorite all time ever. Um, <laughs> Quite possibly, yeah. Um, I don't. I, I I know what Guerlainade is, and I'm familiar with it. I, I I can't say whether I really pick it up in here. I don't mm -hmm. particularly, but I do get a dry, woody sweetness, like resiny sweetness. But yeah, right, right. Okay, how about as far as performance? How's uh... performance? No problem there. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's exceptional, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I like just. So in preparation for the video, I put like, I've only got like four or five mil, no, not even, probably three or four mil. So I did like two or three sprays on my chest, and then I did one spray on my arm. And that's when, when I was sniffing it on my arm to get in closer, I was like, whoa, this is completely contradictory to what I remembered. It's kind of skanky in the opening and sweet in the dry. So I actually sprayed it on again on the other arm because I thought I had sprayed over something or I thought I had sprayed a mislabeled vial or something. And I put it on the other arm, so it was like 12 hours on my skin by the end of the night. Like, all I could smell were, like, especially those two little sprays on my forearm, just, like, everywhere. Yeah. Um, I actually get about six hours solid where I can smell with every single breath I take. It's just like... <sighs> like, six hours straight. And then after that, it really gets close to the skin. And it never really quite disappears until I take a shower. Yeah, yeah. Which and is, it is, I think as well, yeah, to mention it, it is an oil-based fragrance because it's marketed for the like, Middle East. Correct. There's no alcohol in here. It's an FDP, from what I understand, which is a phoned, the parfum. Okay. So, um, what about as far as, like, versatility? Versatility, um, I know you've been wearing this a lot recently. I think you're a braver man than I am for that. I find it to be really strong for the summer. Um, I think this is, to me, more of a, a nighttime formal autumnal fragrance than anything. I don't know about winter, but I think it would be really good for, for the autumn. But again, that's, that's what right. I would you, say. You mentioned it's really hot, but this is marketed towards the Middle East where it's always hot and it's dry and woody. And I actually like it in this weather, and uh, I don't think it's an everyday perfume. I think mm -hmm. it's more of a special occasion perfume. Yeah. I do wear it to work. And it's, it's not something that I think I'll continue to do. I don't think it's a work-appropriate fragrance. Yeah. I've had several comments um, just in the, in the last two days. Somebody asked me if I was wearing Ben Gay. I thought he was asking me if I was gay. And he said, no, you smell like Ben Gay, which I found really weird. Yeah. And then another guy told me, um, your fragrance is really, really strong. And that was about four hours after applying. Maybe he just meant Ben Gay is and you smell like an old person. No, he I asked didn't... me if I was working out or playing sports oh, or something because I had rub. Really? He says you smell like you rub Ben Gay all Because that's like um, very minty mentholated, isn't it? Yeah, As correct. I recall. Yes, yes. Interesting. Because I, I, I don't get that whatsoever. But um, yeah. Um, anything else you want to mention? What about the quality? Oh, quality, absolutely top-notch, Guerlain, you know, the highest of the high. Um, I do have to say, though, you kind of mentioned barbecue meat earlier. I have to admit, I am a bigger fan of Rose du Desert Nacré than this one. Not saying this is a slouch or anything, but I think uh, Nacré just does something that I love and appreciate a little bit more than Sanj, that's all. See, I love Nakri as well. I find Nakri a little bit more feminine, where this is, really? I find more masculine. I um, can see that. There's a lot of rose in Nakri. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I find this just really luxury. It's too luxurious to wear every day. Mm -hmm. and, yes, uh, yes. Well, yeah, what's the price point, if you don't mind saying? It's about $4 per mil. Yeah, and that's 75 mil standard, right? Right. And what about, um, it's very exclusive from yeah. what I understand. 
I've only ever seen it at the, the Guerlain Boutique. I've never seen it at Holtz. I haven't seen it at Saks. I have seen it on discount, oddly enough, on uh, online discounters. Um, other than that, I'm only believing you can find it at... Uh, like select boutiques. Yeah, that's like right. regional boutiques. Yeah, it is funny you mention it being on discount sites because I think I sent you a link for an online discounter. Right, right. And it tr it was in U.S. dollars, but when we converted it, it was basically the same as if we walked in and bought it from the boutique. Mm -hmm. So I think it was more that people could just simply buy something hard to find, which is weird because they're paying pretty much what they would at the boutique, but they're not getting the customer service. They're not getting to test them. They're not getting free samples, etc., etc. Yeah. They're just buying it from some shady, faceless online discounter. There you go. Um, Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, mm -hmm. taking over Guerlain. Yeah. You know, a lot of people complaining. Um, I think the bee likes what we're using in our hair. <laughs> what do you think about, um, this is a Louis Vuitton product. Yeah. Um, it's funny, I, I can't say in terms of formulations, like pre-LV days, but I think actually some of the best stuff Guerlain has done has come since the takeover. Because it was in the 90s, right? Mid, mid yeah. to late 90s? Yeah. I don't so, know, 95 maybe. I think um, some of their best stuff has come out since then, honestly. There have been a lot of mainstream mass-marketed uh, releases. But, yes. I mean, if it wasn't for this line, you know, I hate to admit it, but it was really this line that brought me into the Guerlain Boutique. I was seeking out the Korean Songe. And... Uh, which has actually led us to uh, discover some of their classics, yeah, and uh, their feminines and their 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 masculines and and uh, you know the new designers, which I'm I'm appreciating a little bit more than I should, considering I'm all in the niche perfume now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I you know I kind of disagree with all the negativity Louis Vuitton is getting for. Yeah, for a lot of this. Takeover. Yeah, uh, I guess it's just not, it's very different from what they do. And from what I understand, a lot of the, like, diehard Guerlain freaks, the fanboys, if you will, what I see consistently coming up is dry woods. They hate dry woods. It's an easy, gimme kind of thing. They say, I, I don't particularly agree, like, one of our mutual favorites from Guerlain as well, Santal Royale. Right panned, totally panned when it came out, like by the old Guerlain freaks, right? Yeah, I we myself tried it, couldn't love stand it. it. I love it now, but I couldn't stand it at one point. But it wasn't necessarily the dry woods formula that you hated, right? No, it was, I think it was a lot of the cloyingness and just not being able to understand it. And mm -hmm. It took me a few days, but I've really warmed up to it. Yeah. See, I think that's it, you know, kind of nostalgia for the, the old days, you know, Shalimar and Jiki yeah. and Leur Bleu and right, stuff. Right, right. Which are timeless classics, but People I think... People don't like change. They don't. And I think Guerlain have done a good job, not just keeping up with, but predating um, kind of niche perfume trends. I think they've done a really good job, and I think that's why you're getting all the, you know, focus on the Larte Maitre and the Desert Series and stuff. Right, right. And I think they're kind of ahead of the game on that. So Wasser, he's fixed a couple of... Um, you know, the Mitsukos, the Lure Blues, he's tweaked the parfums, and they, they're highly regarded now. Yes. And he's known for his um, Habit Rouge dress code, mm. his uh, Shalimar parfum initial. Mm. They're all either flankers or reformulations. This is really, I think, his first stamp in um, that he's put out on his own, his first uh, piece that he's created with his own imagination. And uh, I think he's done a fantastic yeah. job when he has no handcuffs on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole series is great. Like, um, Nacri, definitely my favorite. Ensemble Mythique, I think it's it's great, but it just, it feels like it's gone after just a couple minutes. Like, it's supremely high quality, and it, it smells so good when it's on me, but it just seems like it's yeah. gone. See, I've I've done 180 on, on, on Ensemble Mythique as well. I hated it when I first wore mm. it the first couple times, and then I wore an unmarked sample, I wore it two days in a row. I was like, man, this is fantastic. I finally figured out it was on Sons and, mm -hmm. you know, I need a bottle. Yeah. Okay. Guys, um, Songe du Bois de Tay, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Christo's channel, and we'll see you all again soon.